Hi there, this is Brett from Gameby. And this is Lara from Gameby. And we are talking about Remothered Tormented Fathers, which is just releasing on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One after launching on PC, I think at the start of the year? January, I think. It was, I think. Was January? Yeah, January. And like this was this is one of those games that was a big hit in early access. I suppose much like the likes of Hello Neighbor. I think my fear was when it finally came out was that it was going to be like Hello Neighbor and be really negatively received just because it didn't polish up what it promised on. But it seems mm. it's actually it's still a bit of a janky game, but it seems quite polished from what I played. Yeah, it's not it's not 100%, but it's it's, it's solid. It knows what it's doing. It knows the the genre. It it's fun. I played I played a, a few hours of it and yeah it's got a lot going for it if you'd like proper old school survival horror you know you're running around and you're hiding you're not shooting and stuff which i think is it's less rare it's not as rare as it used to be in that big hiatus from you know the silent hill days but mm. yeah it's nice to see it done well i think the thing is like it's just felt it felt like a ps2 horror game yes it doesn't yeah. it looks a bit it looks nicer than the ps2 horror game but it feels like you're very much silent hill 2 era yeah. clock tower 3 era like here's a survival horror game and i say clock tower 3 because that's one of the games i think they took a lot of influence from mm -hmm. is this sort of stalker horror which we've seen obviously in the nowadays with the likes of outlast and alien isolation from a first person perspective but this seems to be much more obviously it's a third person perspective and it's also a very sort of different way of doing it instead of seeming a bit like a badass even though in Outlast I know you're still scared and everything you always feel like quite athletic yes <laughs> whereas in, in this like you start panting and running out of breath after about four steps yeah I mean I think they could have gone a bit further with that because with Haunting Ground did you ever play Haunting Ground that like she would get when the main character got panicked or was getting chased, she'd fall over, it would go all blurry, you know, there was a lot kind of implemented that into the gameplay, whereas this, she does just pant, but she's still kind of going similar speed, unless she's injured. Hmm. So I think there could have been a bit more I, I scope for that. Yeah, I found it funny because, I don't know if you did the same, but like at the start, I was running about, and it seems they've only recorded like the one running sound. Yes. So she's run. She's just like running through the garden, just going, ah, ah. Yes, it's like, yeah. It's not that, it's just, it's just a garden, it's <laughs> yeah. not that scary. <laughs> It does a good job, like it's a bit of a slow start, like it took about, I think it took about a good half an hour before it was like, mm. okay, now the situation's actually unfolding, which I suppose makes sense, but did you feel it could have got started sooner? No, I think, I mean, I'm a big fan of like things like Silent Hill 2, I mean, that was a, quite a slow burn. I mean, it kind of gave you a bit of the setup, but then nothing happened for a long time. Mm. You're just running around in the fog for a long time. Um, I think that's kind of like part and parcel with the genre now. Like, I mean, I know you said Outlast, but Outlast, although it is survival horror, it's jump scare. Yeah. This is more the old school, you know, uh, puzzles and key items and all that jazz. I think it being a slow burn at the start isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think it's kind of accepted. I said it takes about half an hour until you're probably in, at least on your first playthrough, mm. um, until you're in a situation where, okay, you're in this house and you can explore it. Uh, when I played it, I sort of just explored the whole house. I think because I played so many of these games, I know the second you trigger a cutscene, yep. you've then got no time. So I took the time trying to map out in my head where stuff was. Is that what you did or did you play it a bit differently? I have a really, really bad sense of direction. And when I play games like this, I'm one of those people that is checking the map every two seconds. And because there wasn't a map, there was a lot of me getting lost. A lot of the areas look quite similar. Mm. But once I got my head round the mansion that you're in, then yeah, it was fine. It was just, I kept losing track of where the hiding places were that was my main thing because that just kind of screwed me over and over again i just kept remembering right at the bottom of the stairs and right at the top mm. there was a sofa you could hide under yes. on both so i just kept was like screw it i'm just gonna go right to the bottom hide there because i know that's there sort of thing yeah um speaking of hiding places though i liked how when the hiding parts are happening you've got like moving the right stick to make sure yes, you stay in the circle i like that i like that um because it annoyed me i mean i use alien isolation and outlast as an example but obviously there's other games that do it it's a case of, like you're spotted you're spotted i think yeah. haunting ground was the same wasn't it it's like yeah. you had if you're spotted that's it whereas this you've got at least a chance to not be spotted I I like that, yeah. I think the, one of the weird things about this is, at least in the early going, the stalker that's stalking you, he's just really, he's creepy. He's not like physically impeding. He's just proper creepy. Do you have a mixture, without giving too much away, are there like a mixture of sort of stalker characters that you experience throughout the game? Yes, yeah. They do kind of change up what you're going up against without saying too much, but pacing is different. 
character design obviously different and I guess the way that you can avoid them is slightly different as well so it, it does get a little bit repetitive because you are doing the same thing but there is a little bit of variation in terms of the villains coming after you so you do have to play it a little bit differently depending on who's after you because one of the I know one of the key things they sort of say in the description is obviously make sure to sort of just take the time to get used to what the, the loop of the villain yeah. basically yeah because I noticed I don't know if this is giving too much away from the start but in the start section the villain that's stalking you always goes on about saying how they need to go get something Mm -hmm. and that tends to be when they leave you alone for a bit giving you a chance to sort of move about which I found great but then at the same time I found the audio design wasn't quite sharp enough and there was moments where I was like I don't know if they're near me or if they're upstairs or what and I just turned the corner and they were there yeah it's a big flaw for a game like this because you are especially if you're hiding you you're listening out for the audio clues and if they're not there if they're not spot on because I think I think from what I noticed when I was playing with it is if he was on the floor above or the floor below, if it's still the same room, just up or down, the audio will play as if he's in the room. So mm. you don't know whether he is or if he's on a different floor entirely and that kind of made it difficult. Were you playing with headphones or stereo um, speakers? I had like full surround sound <laughs> set up, so it's, it got quite intense at some parts. Yeah, I found it obviously frustrating, but I also liked the way that the map sort of was unfolding. It's like you find a clue very early on in the game um, you find that clue and then it's like oh so I'm going this way and I felt for the most part it's quite it felt like quite an organic progression but then you were then in situations where key items weren't always the clearest of where they were so you can just be which I suppose is a survival horror trope almost yeah, yeah. where you're just searching around it's like well where's this where's this medallion that I need to put yeah. in this door sort of thing or the mad the absolute mad is it Silent Hill 2 where you've got to put orange juice cans down a trash suit chute to get a key from outside or some, yeah. something absolutely mad like that yeah um that sort of bugged me, but it's not the end of the world. Like, I've, after a while, it's like I went back into the rooms and it's like, oh, they yeah. were here all along, I'm an idiot. I think part of the reason why it's so hard to spot them is because you've got all of these things called distract items or... God, it's not stabby items, but I'm just going to say stabby items. <laughs> um, defense? Yeah, defense items, um, which you can... I found... Did you find the upgrade points for the defense items? No. So like there was like, I only found one, but it was like you could basically sharpen a knife so you can use it twice, mm. um, and it, which is a small thing, but it was handy. So when the stalker grabs you, you can at least escape and stab him and run away. But obviously if you don't have a defense item, they grab yeah. you um, and you're dead. But one thing I kept finding confusing about obviously all these items cluttered around is they're all the same sort of icon. It's all just a dot that you go yeah. up to to find it. And I didn't, from I've used a few of the distract items, but there's so many varieties, which is a really nice touch but I'd, there were some of them that I was just picking up by mistake and then it was like I want to throw this at him but then I realised I've got a rope which you use on doors and stuff like what were the distract items that you thought worked the best um, there was a, a music box one that was quite good I like the idea of the distract ones in general I was more keen on those than defence ones because they were only just if, if you got grabbed weren't they there mm. wasn't I mean, there, were, there were ones like you can pick up this can and throw it in his face to get away from him yeah if, he's, if he hasn't grabbed you at that point or like yeah chuck a, chuck a cup so it distracts him to one direction which at one point I did thinking I could throw it further than I could and he just turned around and looked at me I, yeah so. I made that mistake as well yeah um, it was hard to gauge kind of how far they were going mm. I found it in, from what I played an interesting survival horror it feels like Silence of the Lamb sort of stuff I mm. suppose like and you can tell they sort of take influence from that sort of like 90s heroine yeah. with the game. So you've re- reviewed the game as well, haven't yes. you? So where can we see the review? Uh, on the Game Bike website. So yeah, make sure to check out the Game Bike website. We'll leave a link in the description so you can find it a bit easier to break it down a bit more for you and see what Lara actually thought of the game. Any final notes you want to say about the game? It's worth checking out. It's re- it's a really good game. If you like old school horror, then definitely. You'll be able to get it on Xbox One, PS4 and... And as you said, it's been on Steam since January as well. Cool, but yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to hear more of us checking out games, just chatting about games, make sure to let us know in the comments. But until next time, I've been Brett from Game Bite. I've been Lara from Game Bite. And you've been wonderful. Goodbye. Hi there, well done. You made it to the end of the video. If you'd like to see more of Remothered Tormented Fathers in action, make sure to head to our Twitch channel. And let us know in the comments as well that You made it to the end of the video and you know you need to head to the Twitch channel to see a bit more of the game. The link will be in the description. Thanks very much.